Good day. My name is Wilfred West from Locksport, Victoria, Australia. Now today I want to be smoking um, some chops and some pork ribs. But before we do that, um, I'm going to take the rex out here. I want to um, I'm going to give these a light spray, just a bit of uh, like a quick light spray of um, what's the name oil, just to give them a good clean up. I might go over real quick paper towel just to get rid of some of the stuff off there and then give them a light spray of oil. Um, now I noticed on one other person's video I have a similar thing. They have a different type of smoker but they have a um, similar thing to this. Alright, um, and what they've done is they've covered it with silver foil. So I'm thinking of doing the same thing because I'm going to have these vents closed um, and then I'm going to cover this whole lot with silver foil so any drippings will just fall straight off this um, and go straight into the drainer itself. Now, that's the theory behind it. Now, inside here, um, I'm going to take it out. I might have to move this close to the camera. So we can see what I'm talking about. It's a bit awkward trying to have the camera in the way, but... Now, I've had several troubles. That's turned out quite well, actually. That's all. And the ashes and that there, so that's not too bad. But what I was talking about earlier, the trouble I had was I was actually clean this time, which is good. Um, this pot can overfill. Um, and I've got several bits of stuff down here, which I'm going to take out and see if I can use them or not. I don't know if I'll be able to use these again. They're still hard, yeah, so. I'll probably put all this through then for a sieve. All right. Um, take out what I can take out. Because last time I used it, that pot was really full of all the, these bits, and I had to literally clean it all out. So. I've got all this. It's actually not that much now if you look at it. Um, so I would have probably uh, done if I'd keep it or not, and I think I'll probably. Yeah, actually, yeah. Because the ashes you basically just want to get rid of, but the pellets themselves you want to keep. Because they can still be used. Um, a lot of these pellets I scooped out earlier. Um, and the thing is that the hopper kept on getting too full of uh, too full of pallets. So what I might do is drain a little, take a little bit out. I'm waiting for a vacuum cleaner to come, um, so I can actually just specifically have the vacuum cleaner to clean this out, so I can get rid of all the ash out of it. Um, so if you look at the normal pallet. There's really not much difference. These have had a bit more heat into them and stuff like that. Some are probably might not be able to use because they're a bit black. But there's, there's still some in there that's still good. Don't know if I will use them, but as I said before, the trouble I've had is with this with this thing in here. Um, I, I don't know if the the, uh, the burner kicked in or not, uh, but I've had it times where it literally was this high and I couldn't. 
I had to skip them all out, turn it all off, scoop it all out and then restart it and so it would actually start and work. So this is, because every time you, if you, don't leave it for, if you don't use it for a couple of days it does, it tends to do that. But other than that, the smoke has been fantastic. So what I'm planning to do is I'm going to smoke the chops and the pork ribs. I'm going to smoke them slow, um, probably about 165 for at least uh, three or four hours. But what I'm going to do is I'll put them on those racks, use a silver foil on those, and so the, this will all go into the drip tray. That's the theory behind it. So I'll finish off cleaning this up, but that looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't know if I'll need to, to worry about that, but I'll have a quick look at it. Um, I do hope you like this video, just so please subscribe. Okay, welcome back. Now, what I've done is I've cleaned around the pellets of um, wood chips I could use. I've cleaned them and put them back into there. I've gotten rid of most of the um, ash out of the hot, out of the um, the, the pot, the, the burner. Um, I've given them a quick clean up, sprayed them, and also put um, aluminium aluminum foil on the bottom. Now first of all turn this on and we'll get it going. Now I've got the I've got the um, that noise you hear is the fan starting up and the thing taking the wood pellets to the burner. Um, I've got the meat sitting on the countertop I'm going to season that just with the dry seasoning today and now I'll go straight on top of the grill. When this sets itself um, I'm going to put this on 165 and we'll go from there. Now I hope this has no problems this time. I'll probably get the temperature gauge, I'm not quite sure because the chops are pretty thin but the um, but the pork uh, ribs are a bit thick. Okay, it's clicked into the first one. I'll click on number one. The Wi-Fi button here is going, going ballistic. You can see it. Oh, you can see that. There we go. So it's clicked onto number one. Um, and that little light there is the Wi-Fi. I think it's part of the Wi-Fi. I'm not quite sure, but um, I still got to get the Wi-Fi fixed up on, on the. So I have to go to my um, provider, and hopefully they can get the app to work. Now next we'll click on to number two soon. Hopefully it heats up because last time I had done when I cooked the um, hamburgers the other day, the pallet as before the, that was way too the burner was way too full of stuff. I had to switch it off, switch it on several times because it just wasn't getting wasn't starting up the um process. I don't know if it's too much ash in there because I haven't used it that many times. It looks like the smell of this, it looks like it might be, it can come up good. Now to number three. And the next click will set the te will be the temperature. Now it's saying it's 73 at the moment. Mm -hmm smoke coming out of the chimney but you can see that it's starting to smoke up. So now we're going to set this up to uh, I might go 164, 170. I'm going to put on 170 and I'm going to smoke everything at 170 for about three or four hours. Okay. 
We're gonna have a look at the uh, meat now. Okay, welcome back. This is what I'll be smoking. We've got the lamb here and we've got the pork over here. And I'm going to be using a bit of this rub. This rub and see thing onto it. Okay, we have to go around the other side. Pretty much just want to pat this down. Give it a good pat down, let it sit in there, soak in there. Now I don't want to let it sit for too long because all go into the smoker. By the time I get all this ready and the smoker will be ready, I'm just going to wash this glove. Do the same for this side. Get around the top. So that's a little. That's that done. Run the rub this one into into here. You can use both hands on this one. I can wash these gloves in a minute. Same with this lot. Just want to rub all this in so it gets that flavoring in there. That's what we're going to do. Get that so See, some people let's say soak for 20 minutes or half an hour. I'm really not really worried about that because we're going to be smoking it and these aren't all that big so they'll be losing a lot of moisture. So I'll take these two out, wash my gloves again and then I'll take these two out. That's how simple the marinade can be, just a dry marinade. Um, like you can do wet marinades as well, where you can just have them say it, they'll just you know, be perfect so when, you, when you're marinating them, they'll sit for, um, for a while, then you can put them onto the, that smoker as well and get the smoke flavour to them. But I sometimes prefer a dry marinade because just, you want that flavour in there. You don't want too much moisture taken out because you still got to smoke it, remember. So let's go have a quick... We'll go throw these in and see what... Well, first of all, see what temperature is, we'll go throw them in. Welcome back. Now... I'm going to be um, dropping the meat in now, even though it says it's 156. I reset it to go to 200. Um, I've been sitting here for like five, five, ten minutes. It's been sitting around the 154 mark or 155 mark. Now what I'm going to do is I'm throw all, of, put all this in, then we're going to go to um, let it go to 200, and every um, half hour to an hour we're going to check it for four hours.
that's all then. Um, yeah, so before I'm going to let that smoke now for um, four hours. Every half hour to every hour I'm going to check the um, temperature, make sure the smoking temperature is the right temperature. So, we'll be back. Welcome back. Now, I'm um, going to chuck the temperature gauge in and turn them over. It is about 15 past 3, so it's been about two hours almost. Much of the juices has dropped out, as you can see there, which is quite good. But that's the bottom. I'm going to leave this for another two hours. Uh, still on 200, and let's have a look at the intent, that meat temperature. That's at 124. So this is a bit of We'll leave this. Uh, I'll just wash this glove again. This glove's clean, but I'll wash this glove and um, yeah, we'll get back to it. But wait. I think the internal temperature, I have to get it, is about 165, I think. So we're going to keep going. I'll have a look at the sheet, see what the internal temperature is. They say juicy. Um, as you can see, that does look really nice. Now I'll turn them over that way there. Now I can leave them go for another two hours here. So about say five o'clock. And um, they'll have that nice um, mark on there as well. Oh we'll be back in about two hours and we'll have a look at it. Welcome back. Now I've got my silver foil ready to go for the meat and the um, rear esky here. The internal temperature of the lamp is 145. It's still 200 there. I'm getting my beast. My beast um, at my monitor. A meter should be. That's right. A meter. I'm going to be testing the the temperature of the pork with this and see what it says. Um, it's currently 145 the lamb, so pretty much that should be ready to take off. But I want to check the pork so I can get the random at the same temperature, then I might take it off a bit earlier, even though it's only 15 past 4. I'll still let this rest for probably about half an hour, so it'll be almost ready for 5 o'clock. Let's have a quick look at the temperature, shall we? Oh, that smokes. That's gone 140, 142, 143, 144. So, pretty much, that's the same temperature. I'll quickly check this bit of lamb here. Fell out this 
smoke it. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> 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 the hawk's about 140. Yeah. I think this may be ready. So what I might do is um, get the pieces off here and then wrap them up. Because it looks ready. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll pull out that temperature, pull out the um, temperature gauge um, off the meat and take that out of the system and then oh, we'll, we'll be back and we'll basically just take all the meat off there um, and just let it sit there I think so yeah I'll quickly take this out so I can watch the temperature gauges I'll give them a quick rinse every time I use them Now we'll be back and we'll just um, wrap, every, wrap all the men up together. Okay, welcome back. It's about half past um, four. So I'm going to take these off and wrap them up in silver foil each and put them, wrap them up in this in the towel and then drop them into a cooler. So I'm going to turn this off now. I think this is her already. I'll wrap this one first. And I'm going to let this sit for about half an hour. I mean, no more than half an hour we need to let it sit for. Now let's get the chops out. We'll get the pork out also. That's looking good, I think. Wouldn't mind getting that probably crisp up a little bit. But I think, yep, that's looking good. I kind of like the smoke in the face sometimes and sometimes I don't. But oh that had to break, wouldn't it? <laughs> Cheap ass foil. What can we do with this? Back a bit further. I really want them to rest now for half an hour. Now we get our little esky out. I know Americans call this a cool art, it's called an esky. And we'll let that sit in there for half an hour. And we'll see how it actually goes then. So by five o'clock, we'll take these out and we'll have a look at them. Um, left it, leave the fan going. Now this fan will stay on for 10 minutes. Um, basically to blow all the coals. To all the sawdust out, make sure the flames have all died down. And all the, um, the last little bit of the, what do you call it, charcoal? Uh, yeah, you basically clean it all up. And then I'll switch it off at the wall.
It's quite warm actually today. Um, yeah, we'll see how it all turns out in about half an hour's time. Okay, welcome back. Now, going to unwrap this meat. It's been there for just over half an hour. So, it's still nice and warm. So I'm hoping this is taking back the juices and all that. I'll just take one off and I'll have a look at it. Just leave that wrap back up. Just want to do a cut test and taste test and see what she, see if she's really cooked. So let's have a look at this one. I think that looks good. It's a little bit rubbery here, but you expect that I could probably maybe drown that up um, in, the, in the thing there, on the colour pan. It's got a nice smell to it. Mmm. Got a sweet taste to it from that seasoning. I think it's pretty. Mm, that's nice. So that's that one now. I'll let them wrap up the salt, keep them warm. Oh, that does look really nice. It tastes nice, looks nice, probably a bit of salt, because I like salt in my food. So I'll grab one chop and have a quick taste test for the chop. I'll cut this straight in half. I probably could leave it longer to get that fat rendered down more, maybe. Or put it on a higher temperature. So I'll just take this bit off here and taste that with the fat on it. Now, first of all, let's have a look at it. Oh, you can see that. See that smoke ring, really dark, dark red there. It's nice and thick. Oh, wow. It falls apart. Oh. That's perfect. Um, Probably a little bit of salt, but that's about all I'll need on it. Other than that, it's going to be perfect. Okay, welcome back. Now, this is the uh, end result. I'll put a bit of salt and pepper onto it, because I do like the extra salt flavour on that. We've got some spuds from the garden, carrots, and we've got broad beans there. I do hope you like this video, so please subscribe. I think the flavour's come out really well. It's got a sweet, really nice sweet flavour to everything from that rub. Um, anyway, my name is Wilfred West from Luxport, Victoria, Australia, signing off. Thank you again for watching my videos, and all comments are welcome. You all have a great day now.